Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I have a bunch of crappy products to talk to you about that are from the drugstore. Today, we are exclusively going to be going through drugstore products that I just don't get, that didn't really do it for me, you know? Like we tried, we met, I liked the color, I liked something about it enough to try it out and Mm, you know, like thank you next, done over, I'll pass because there are better options out there. I have 15 items to warn you about. Caution, you've been warned. And if you love these, then keep loving them because this is just my opinion, you know? So take it with a grain of salt. I'm ready. That wasn't too long of an intro, but if you're new here, hi, my name's Tati. Okay, so. Mm. I'm really loving my eye makeup today, not wearing anything that I'm about to discuss. <laughs> so let's start with eyeshadow. I have a primer that I just overall tried actually a lot of times. I feel like I tried this one a bunch and I wanted to like it for whatever reason. I just kept trying it, kept it on hand because it's not your typical just like see-through moisturizing eye primer, kind of like the Urban Decay Primer Potion. My sisters love that. I don't. I really love a painterly paint pot using concealer, something that's gonna cancel out any of the discoloration and veins on my eyes. So with this one, I really liked it at first. I was like, oh, it's kind of brightening. It's kind of like a hybrid of those two formulas. But the more I used it, the more I realized that it really did not work as well as concealer or painterly paint pot for me. I would have more creasing, a little more bunchiness and patchiness when I was applying shadows. And you know, it takes some time to figure that out. It really does. If you have a basic everyday routine and you're using the same shadows and the same technique and you use painterly paint pot or a concealer and then a new primer over here, that's really where you discover like, oh crap, like my go-to whatever is not working as well. Like this is the problem. So I finally decided discovered, meh, I don't like it. Catrice has so many great products, like they really, really do. I think in all of my underrated at the drugstore videos, Catrice always shows up to the party, is always there. This just was not it for me. I also tried for like three weeks. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, you need to try that longer, Tati. Just like give it a chance. No, I'm not, I'm uninterested in giving it a chance. This is the L'Oreal Lash Serum Solution. And this is kind of like a drugstore version of a lash conditioning Latisse. Why do I always wanna call it Latrice? That's not what it is. I'm afraid of that, by the way, because they say that it can turn your eyes a different color. And I'm like, well, I like my eyes. I don't wanna do that. I'll wear false lashes for life. I don't care, like not worth the risk. But some of the other formulas don't give you that warning. And this one sounded pretty good to me. And I was like, why not? Like, I know that I thrash my lashes up to high heaven between the glue and mascara and the makeup and, you know, taking it off and this and that. And a lot of people will be like, oh, doesn't Halo help you? And yes, it does, absolutely. Halo is the brand that I own. It's my brand. And I have a hair skin nail booster. And a lot of people ask, will that help your brows and your lashes? It absolutely can, but it's not going to get in there at the follicle and stimulate the way Latisse or any of these lash serums really will. It's a very different way that the body is reacting. So they are different. I just want to kind of make that clear. So this I gave a go and my issue with it is not the price. It's not the applicator. There's nothing wrong with anything. It's not even that it didn't work. It's that it irritated the crap out of my eyes. If you have a recommendation for something that won't change my eye color, that is more gentle, I've tried the Rodin Fields one and that one works, but it also makes my eyes red. Like I don't wanna look like a dragon and have good lashes and make everybody look at my eyes that are red because I use something to make my lashes look good. Tell me how that makes any sense. It just doesn't. Maybe I just have really super sensitive eyes. I don't know. Leave your recommendations below. I would really, really love that. And let's keep it moving. Um, by the way, do you guys love this? I think it's so cute. I'm gonna stand up really quickly to show you guys. It's fashion show time, yes. Ooh, maybe too much. This is from Sage the Label. I will link below the store. This is from a subscriber. She sent me a shirt from her boutique and I was so just like, thought it was the cutest thing ever and I was really excited to wear it on camera. And also I have another shout out. I wanna give a major shout out to Angie, makeup junkie in NYC. She and I have been talking, we've been messaging each other since 2017 and literally like, 
I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Um, I've sent her some makeup. Anyway, she is battling cancer and I just have been in communication with her. I've sent her things. She sent me this necklace that is just the most thoughtful, beautiful thing ever. And I am thinking of you and I am hoping that you're doing well and I admire you. I've told you that so many times because you're battling the real deal and what we have going on here on the internet is an illusion and it's supposed to be an escape. Nothing's as serious as, as a health issue and uh, she really has been just wonderful and put so much in perspective for me. So you guys, I have the greatest subscribers. You guys are the freaking best. I adore you and I feel, I mean, I think everybody's gonna say this, like everybody would say this on their channel and I would hope that they would feel that way and I would hope that they would say this, but I really feel like I have such a warm, caring, loving, understanding, just kind audience. And I think of you always when I do these videos and when I see you in real life, it just means so much to me that you are always so warm and you feel like a friend to me. So thank you so much. So wearing my Sage the Label, and this gorgeous little necklace from Angie, and I hope that you are enjoying the makeup that I sent. Okay, moving right into the stuff that doesn't work. This almost cost, uh, this almost started a fight at Target. <laughs> it was 4th of July when I bought this. I was in Seattle and my sisters were with me and Logan, no, not Logan, Emily had crapped herself in Target and Sabrina was like, I gotta get out of here. We need to leave right now. And I'm on the floor in Target, just like cross-legged on the floor. And I'm like, there's new makeup. And they're like, dear God, you have enough of it. Get it and go, like we need to go. And you know, and Emily's laughing and happy as a clam, but she's just, you know? So I had to like make decisions fast. I don't like to do that. I like to take my sweet time with everything. And I grabbed this and I was so excited to use it. And I got home and I was swatching it. And I'm like, this is trash. I'm sorry, it just is. Like sometimes there's a product where you're like, maybe it's just me, I don't like it. But you know, I was sitting there swatching and I'm gonna show you guys. And I was just like, um, no, where's the color? Stop it. Like it'll look shiny on the top and then you're like, wait, what? Like this one is supposed to be like glimmery, like it looked shiny on the top. Not anymore. It's like, where'd the sparkle go? It was just on the top. Is that not the most irritating thing ever? Okay, that one's not so bad. But these are not exactly like the cheapest palettes ever. This is a whole brand new line that Target is carrying. And I mean, some of them are okay. Some of them are better than others. And I guess if you were to layer it up, see, I'm making excuses for it already. I feel bad. No, it looks terrible actually. Do you see? No. What do you guys think? Have any of you tried this? Is this just like the one dud palette and me being rushed with the baby and everything was like, oh, you grabbed the worst one. Should I try another one? Tell me please. This color right here, if this was like the most awesome quality shadow of life, like that color, mm, I would be so into that. It's just uneven. And like when you swatch it or put it on the eye, it's like, like there's just that like dustiness. Mm -mm. I have a Z palette next to me. I'm just gonna grab like a nice metallic to show you guys like what a nice shadow should look like. Yes, see, I'm not pulling at all. Do you see the intensity? Right? Like, boom. Yeah. So I would think twice about products from this brand, Makeup Obsession. Also, the Makeup Obsession Fit Fix. This is an extra hold makeup spray and this denatured alcohol. It has castor oil. It has aloe, which is great. It has a few like good and a little more drying ingredients, kind of similar to an Urban Decay All Nighter. The thing I don't like about this one is it leaves that like sticky feeling. Like it just like, like you can feel it. I don't want to feel anything. I want to feel like I am naturally <laughs> this never gonna happen but i want to feel that way like i don't want to be aware of my makeup do you know what i mean the texture of sticky kind of makes me just like uncomfortable so i don't like that setting spray either and then you guys know i don't like i don't like the scent of cherry at all like anything cherry just makes me go 
Like I just, I really can't, I can't do it. So the few times that I tried this, it was just unpleasant, I think because of the scent and being overwhelmed by the scent that I couldn't really give it the best feedback. But this, I just, it's a cherry matte setting spray with hyaluronic acid. I don't really love this. I think there are better. I have another shadow palette that I'm just like, wow, you don't do much. There's just the competition steep. That's all I have to say, you know? Competition is steep. This is from Rimmel. It's just a little, the formula is a little dry. That's my issue. They have different ones. It's just like crumbly and kind of dry. That's the problem. You can make it work. You can make anything work. You, that's a pretty color. You absolutely can. But my issue with these is just the powdery texture. It doesn't allow you to have that puff or that pop of color without layering quite a bit. And then things can look kind of even and as you're blending, get a little bit patchy. And when there are other options that work better, I would say go with other options. Now I will say that they have some more neutral tone palettes that are like this, that work really well, that have almost a different, more metallic satin feel. It's the brighter ones that have that powdery texture that is the problem for me. I'm just not a fan of it. I think there's so much better out there. Count how many times I say that in this video. You can do better. I'm that friend. I'll tell you that you can do better. But no one ever wants to hear that anyway. So moving right along, let's talk about the Putty Powder Eye Beam from Revlon. Looks pretty, doesn't do a whole lot. It's like an eyeshadow topper, but I mean, you gotta really like go hard with this and I just don't think it's worth the money. And it's kind of like duochromatic and looks a little bit uneven. Just go for a ColourPop shadow for five bucks and be done with it because this is just not it for me. I don't like it. Moving on. Wet n Wild, can we please stop making the black turns red kind of lip things? face things, blushes. This just never looks good on anyone, I'm telling you. Actually, no, I take that back. My mom loves this stuff. Maybe I should send this to my mom. No offense, mom, but these kind of things, I don't know. I think they turn like a really strange color. She loves them. Like the frog prince thing, like you see how this is clear and then it turns like this. I think the color that it develops into is always like really bright pink and it's just never like the right tone. No, blush please. Don't be so shiny. This is too shiny, you guys. It is not a cute look when you overload your cheeks with shimmer. Be selective about where you are placing high shine on the face. If you do your foundation, your powder, a highlight, some contour, and you go in with like shimmery bronzer and then shimmery blush, the eye doesn't really know where to go and where it's seeing that like beautiful glow. So just pick one avenue. If you're doing just like tinted moisturizer and like a rosy blush and you want it to have a little bit of a sheen, cool, go there, do that. But keep in mind that things will reflect and when you have too much reflecting on the face, it might make things look a little unblended and uneven. And if you don't want that, then just kind of be mindful about where you are choosing to purchase matte versus shimmery. And I'm not talking about satin. Satin is a little more adaptable, blendable. But when you're talking about a blush that just carries so much shine, I just don't think it looks that great. So these were a pass for me, the blush please. I like the glosses in that collection and I also really love the body product that they came out with. This is stunning, you know, I do love this. The other products, the blushes and the bronzer, just not really my fave, you know? I've had an increasingly hard time figuring these guys out. I wanted to, cause I like the eye gloss and I like the jelly lips, but this jelly, a uh, blush is very deceiving because again, it's very high shine. You put it on and I think my immediate reaction when I first was wearing it was like, this is really nice. Like, I like it. It's so good. And then like a few hours later, I'd be like, so not good. I can literally see every pore on my face. So it would kind of break apart a little bit and then you just like see texture and you know, I'll give you a couple of chances if I kind of like you at first. But beyond that, if you're gonna make my pores look worse than when I wake up, you gots to go. So that's in the no pile. Speaking of way too shimmery things, I have a CoverGirl bronzer. You guys, this is just so shiny. It smells like chocolate, which is really nice. This is the semi chocoholic bronzer in 150. I think they have a lighter one too, but um, I, 
need some hot chocolate right now. It literally smells like I ripped open a packet of Swiss Miss. That's something nice about you if I'm looking for good things, but it's just too shimmery. I'm aware this is not the correct shade for me, but this is just too shimmery. Just don't do it. If you want like slightly shimmery from the drugstore for bronzers, go with Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. It has a little bit of an edge into satin, silky kind of a thing, but it is so fine that it doesn't look like glitter on the face. So that one's much better. This is my same complaint with this product right here from Wet n Wild. This is from the Hummingbird Collection. And if you can't find it in stores, they do still have it online. That's what I found with a lot of their collections is they do keep them around online, which is nice. Now, this is beautiful as a highlighter. And actually I am half tempted to just show you like how stunning this is how gorgeous this is as a highlight, right? Soft, pinky, really pretty, right? It's marketed as a blush. I do not want any one of you out there to be confused to purchase this as a blush. This is not a blush. This, this is not a blush. I don't know who's piling that on their cheeks, but just don't do that. All right, let's talk about mascaras. Three, two, one, I'm just gonna do this fast. I have the Glam and Doll Waterproof from Catrice. Spiky, doesn't build up really fast, really difficult to take off, not a fan. This one from Revlon, the So Fierce. I just have not been into a Revlon mascara in ages. They used to make some better ones. They had one that almost came in like a purple green tube back when I was doing the Allure Beauty Blogger Awards. They sent me a box of that and I remember really, really loving that one. But beyond that, I'm like, uh. Ow! Oh my God, I was about to actually like say something that I shouldn't and then I hit my knee and it's like, God is like, shut your mouth and keep it to yourself. Scandalize Waterproof Mascara. Oof. Again, it's kind of like an impressive brush, but it just gets everywhere and it does not build and it dries down almost kind of shiny, which I don't really like. So this was a pass as well. Oh my God, I went through 15 products in one take, boom. Okay, you guys. 15 items that I don't recommend. Let me know where I got it wrong. Do you love any of these? Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't and ring the bell so you're notified of my upcoming videos. I hope to hang out again soon and I'm wishing you guys a good one. I will see you all in my next video. Mwah.